All right guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing extremely well. Today I'm going to be presenting to you two of what I classify as the next generation of e-bikes. They bring new features, abilities that previously we haven't seen. And I think in the future, are gonna become much more standardized. And that's why I'm calling them next generation features. So the first bike here is the Anioki A8 Pro Max. And I believe this is like the second generation of this bike because I first saw it last year-ish. And it was cool. The, the main claim to fame here is the, why is my bike so slow? Okay, mode theory. The main claim to fame here is the massive battery. And that must have been a, a winning combination because with this second generation, that is completely unchanged. We have a massive 52 volt, 60 amp hour battery. So that means if you use, let's say 50 watt hours per mile, which I think is pretty uh, conservative, you should get about 60 miles of range. And 60 miles of range for a bike that's sub $3,000, this comes in at $2,900 at the time of me filming this. That alone makes this bike a, a pretty solid value proposition. But the main thing they upgraded this year is they added an entirely second motor. So this is now a dual motor bike. In the front, it's, it's dual hub motors. In the front, the peak wattage is 1600 and in the rear, 1900. I do like how the rear is a bit more powerful because naturally it's gonna have a bit more of the weight that it has to pull. So I think that was a smart move. And I mean, overall, when you have such a massive battery capacity, which also tends to add weight to the overall bike, I think a second motor makes a lot of sense. It's not gonna drastically decrease your range and it's gonna give you uh, the power that, let's face it, we all desperately desire. They claim that this has a top speed of 45 miles per hour, but I find that highly suspect because these are using pretty standard geared hub motors and motor RPM is directly proportional to voltage. So I don't think the top speed is really gonna be that much higher than a single motor variant, running at the same voltage, of course. The main difference is gonna be the acceleration getting up to that maximum speed, the peppiness, the overall enjoyment of riding an electric bike will certainly go up with having a second motor. And the top speed will inevitably increase slightly, but 45 miles per hour, I think is a little rich given the voltage and the, the, the kind of motors being used here. So dual hub motors is one of these next gen features that I, I see becoming way more popular and for good reason. It drastically influences the driving characteristics of the bike for the better. The next next gen feature I, I'm seeing more often, including on this Anioki A8 Pro, is with the tires. So this model, Again, this is an upgrade from the, the previous version of it just last year. Out of the box, this comes with much better upgraded premium tires. I've actually contemplated buying these tires myself just off of Amazon before, because in comparison to the, the, the standard thin knobby tires that up until now has been the standard, these are significantly better. Even the bike I'm on right now, if you guys saw the review on the channel recently, you know, this is the Rave Bullet GTX. And this upgrade is something they did. The tires here are different, they're, they're E Huntsman, another one of my favorites. But out of the box, having legit premium tires, I think it's a trend that's long overdue. And I'm glad to see it finally becoming more mainstream. And if I was buying a bike today, this is certainly a feature I would wanna see on the bike that I buy. And then the final next gen feature here has to do with the brakes. Uh, take a look at the rotors on this bike. They are by far the biggest, potentially most overkill disc I've ever seen. I think they're over 300 millimeters in diameter. Usually what you see is 160 millimeters. So half the size. Bigger rotors, of course, are just better in every way possible. More stopping power, better heat dissipation. A bigger rotor also really doesn't cost that much more than a smaller rotor. And we're talking a difference of like a couple of dollars. So having bigger rotors is another trend that I'm noticing more and more on newer e-bikes. 
I'm gonna say they don't have to be uh, this big, 300 plus millimeters. Although, I mean, it's totally welcome in my book, but 200 plus millimeters is uh, a size range that I wanna see more of, and we are seeing more of. So that's the Anioki A8 Pro. A nice upgrade over the model I saw last year. You gotta love the massive battery. The other next-gen bike that I'm sure you guys haven't heard of is the fabulous EMX. Kind of a weird name, even their website is a little bit janky. Initially, when you look at the bike, it's certainly not as flashy as the previous Anioki, but it has a lot of the same kind of next-gen features, plus some, some differences. They went a slightly different direction here. So the big one is the dual motors. Again, here, this bike features dual hub motors, and that by far is gonna have the biggest direct impact on how enjoyable the bike is, how it feels, the responsiveness. I like seeing two motors. Now, unlike the Anioki, these are weaker, at least on paper. They say that the motors, each of them are 750 watts. They didn't list any kind of peak power, if I had a guess, it's because of regulations. And in reality, I'm hoping that there is an unlock feature and the peak wattage is more competitive with the Anioki. But regardless, we have two motors here and the battery isn't as large in terms of raw capacity as the Anioki, but they did opt for higher voltage. So this battery is 60 volts versus the 52 in the Anioki. And that, much like the motors, a higher voltage battery has a very meaningful direct impact on how the bike handles. And this is another trend I've been seeing. The volts steadily has been increasing throughout the industry. I think the infamous 48 volt e-bike battery is finally dead, at least when you get away from the, the ultra budget stuff. Seems like 52 volts and increasingly 60 volts is now the baseline, the Anioki battery pack, 52 volts times the 60 amp hour capacity is 3,120 watt hours. This 60 volts times 20 amp hours is 1,200 watt hours. That just so happens to be the exact same as the Wired Freedom. That was also 60 volts, 20 amp hours. And from my experience, of course, depending on what you need the bike for, use cases, it's all gonna vary, but I found that to be a pretty good size battery. And the Wired Freedom might actually be a good analog for this bike because the battery is essentially exactly the same on paper. The Wired Freedom only had one hub motor, but it was about double the power of the dual 750 we have on this bike. And if the performance is similar to the Wired Freedom, that would make this bike super awesome. Unfortunately, this bike is a bit more expensive. It's $3,500. So it's $600 more than the aforementioned Anioki. But I have to say, I think just personally, I would opt for this bike. They both have dual motors. And really the main question is, do you want higher capacity or higher voltage? And I mean, for me, it's, it's voltage all day long. So definitely let me know in the comments below, out of these two bikes, which one would you go with? And I'm gonna try my best to identify which bike you guys like the most, and I'm gonna try and review it on the channel. So definitely leave those comments. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, like, subscribe, always greatly appreciated. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.